find the slope graphically. Today, we're going to look at lines graphed on coordinate grids and use those to find the slope of the line. Let's take a look at the first problem. Now our goal is to find the slope of this line in blue. And I'm told that we should draw a line representing the rise and a line representing the run of the line. State the slope of the line in simplest form. And some hints over here about how I can go about doing that. First, click twice to plot each segment, and if I need to, click a segment to delete it. So, I'm going to need to find a rise and a run. There are many ways to do this. I'm going to show you a way that works for me. I'm going to start by looking along this line for a dot that lines up perfectly with the line and an intersection. So this is a little bit off. That's a little bit off, but this is perfect. I like that point right there. I need to find another point on this line that's also at a perfect intersection. That's not quite, that's not good, no. Close but not quite, okay, that one lines up nicely. Now, before I click here, here's my trick. Once I've found my other point, I'm going to move back to my first point, but only horizontally. So in this case, I'm going to go left, 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 until I'm right above my original point, and click that to make my rise. Now, to make my run, I start where my first segment ended, click here again, and then just drag that back until I hit the point that I found before, right there. Fantastic. I've done that first step of drawing a line representing the rise and a line representing the run. Okay, now how can I use this to figure out the slope of the line in simplest form? Well, a slope should be some sort of ratio. I'm going to write that as a fraction. I did that by hitting the slash button underneath the question mark on my keyboard. So to do this, first I'm going to need to consider the rise. We're always going to consider rise first when we think about slope. How much did it rise? Well, it went up by 1. That's a positive direction, so I can write 1. Then my run, this horizontal dotted line. How far did that go? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the run is 5. I have a slope. I have a ratio of 1 over 5. I know that it's simplified because the two points that I chose were as close together as they could be, so I'm ready to submit my answer. Yes! Let's take a look at a new problem. Okay, we have another line now. I'm noticing that this line seems to be going downhill. If I'm reading it from left to right the way we read English, it looks like it's going downwards. That's going to remind me that my final answer should be a negative slope. But let's still just go through our procedure that I did before to see how this would work. First, I'm going to find a point on the line that matches up with the intersection. Well, that's not quite. No. No. Ooh, that's a good one. There's a point. Now I need to find another point that lines up. Not quite, not quite, no. Ooh, there's one, but I don't click yet. I'm going to head back to my original dot, but only moving horizontally. Back, 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 until I'm right below my original dot. And that's where I click. Now I have a little sketch of the rise. To make the run, I just go from that second point that I clicked and back to the line, following a horizontal direction. And I click where I hit the line. Oh, this time it happened to be the y-intercept. It won't always be. Great, I've now sketched the rise and the run 
so I can make my slope fraction. It's going to be a fraction, so I'm going to type that slash underneath the question mark. And on top, well, first I went down by 2. Down is a negative direction, so I can write negative 2 on top. And then over here, I went right. How far? One, two, three, four, five spaces. So I can record that in my run, my denominator. Let's see, negative two over five. It makes sense for it to be a negative since it looks like it's going downhill as we read it from left to right. Let's try. Fantastic. Let's try some more. Okay, new line. Let's start by looking for some points that could work. Could this point work? Oh, no, that's a miss. Ah, unfortunately, to erase that, I need to finish drawing that line and then click on that line to delete it. Let's try to be more careful. That's not a good point. Ooh, but this is a good point. Now, another mistake that I could make Now, another mistake that I could make is by choosing a point that's quite far away. Even in this point, it's on the line, it should give me the slope, but let's see what happens if I do it. If I think of here, remember, I'm not going to click yet, I'm going to go back until I'm above my original point, careful to go perfectly horizontal, and there, I'm on top of my original point. Click. Next segment to show the run, click here again, and drag it back horizontally until I run into my blue line. Okay, now shouldn't it just be an issue of counting the rise and the run? Let's see, the rise went up, positive direction, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine top of the fraction, I write 9, and below, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It went across 12. But if I submit that, it says that it's not correct. Ah, I needed to get it in simplest form. 9 twelfths is not in simplest form. The simplest form would be 3 over 4. I would have done better if I had chosen a pair of points that were closer together, like these two, or these two, or these two. But choosing points that were far apart gave me this 9 over 12. Now, I could simplify that if I'm comfortable simplifying fractions. I can always use Desmos just to be sure. But to avoid having to make that extra step, I'm going to always try to find two points that are as close together as possible. Let's try one more. Okay, we have another blue line. This one seems to be going downhill, so I should expect a negative slope as my answer. I'm going to start by finding a point on the line that matches up with these grid intersections, and here's a good one, right here. And then keep following until I hit another perfect... Oh, there's a perfect intersection, but I don't click it yet. Instead, I move horizontally until I'm straight above or below, right there. Now I click, and this dotted line is my rise. To get my run, I click here again, and follow it until it hits the line. Perfect. I'm ready to interpret my notes and make a slope fraction. First, my rise. I went down, so that's a negative direction like we expected. Goes down by one, two, three, four, five. Negative five. And then how far does it run? One, two. Two. My final answer looks like negative 5 over 2. Negative makes sense. It's going downhill, so I'm ready to submit. Wonderful. So to recap, 
To find the slope of a line on a graph, it helps to make a triangle that shows the rise and the run. Here's an example of one way that you could do the triangle. I always recommend finding perfect points that match up with the line and these grid intersections, and try, if you can, to find points that are as close to each other as possible so you don't need to worry about unsimplified fractions. Look at more examples if you need to, let me know what your questions are, and good luck.